Hi, my name is Chris Wielden and I'm a choreographer. When I stopped dancing, I became the resident choreographer of the New York City Ballet. So I stayed within, you know, this wonderful, um, big company. Um, and I had many opportunities and, you know, money was never an issue. It was basically, you know, this is your budget, which for any, but for any small company would seem like a fortune. In a way, although it sounds like, like it should be choreographer's heaven, is was not particularly good for me because I just sort of, I think I fell into a little bit of a rhythm and it became a little bit about kind of just making ballets that fit within, you know. So I guess to, in order to push myself, I decided to, to give up, you know, that great sort of constant paycheck and, and, um, and take on some of the worries of having to actually put together a group of dancers, find the money to put the show on, find the designers, find the venues, figure out the rep, kind of take care of the dancers a little bit and try to understand them and their needs within a company. Um, I've always pushed myself in uncomfortable ways. And when I get comfortable in a situation, then I find a way to make it uncomfortable again. And I think that's a really important thing for an artist to do. And you go through periods when it just doesn't work and you know everything that comes out is shit but still at least you're pushing yourself and you're not going to at the end of your career or at the end of your life look back and go well you know maybe i should have tried that that might have been a good idea i think the main thing from the main reason that that i invite other choreographers to come in to work with uh with morphosis actually it's two reasons the first is I always like the um, to have that around me. I think it's important because you can get lost in your own little cocoon. You know what you do well, and um, it's good to be challenged by other choreographers and see people around you who do things better than you and learn from them and understand that and understand that about yourself. But also for the dancers, I think it's I think it's uninteresting. It doesn't matter how great a choreographer is. I think um, dancers are hungry to be pushed in different directions, especially now. You know, everyone's so versatile, they can do everything. With contemporary work, take the shoes off, do something contemporary. Um, put the shoes back on, do ballet. You know, it's more, I think, it, I think uh, in order to keep dancers kind of artistically fulfilled, they need that, they need those challenges too. And also for an audience, an audience doesn't want to see an evening of one choreographer's work, really. I mean, even the great choreographers, you can go and see, a, you can go and see an old balancing program and kind of be like satiated by the end. Um, and I think choreographer's work often looks better balanced off against other choreographer's work. One of the really smart things, that, well, he said a lot of smart things. He was very quotable to balancing, but he said, you know, putting together a program is like balancing a meal, a good meal. And you don't want your dessert to taste like your ceviche. Yuck. <laughs> so, um, so that's, you know, that's one of the reasons why Morphosis is that way. But also, like, now starting to bring visual artists in, um, like this program we're doing this year with my, well, the kind of design experiment we're doing with my piece with the two different designs. Uh, those are the kind of risks that you can take as a small company. The big companies tend to not that do that sort of thing. Like, you know, we have our stock rep and we know what works. Sorry, it's my computer. We know what works. Um, we know that this ballet sells tickets and this ballet sells tickets, so we're gonna program this with this. It's, it's different for us because we don't have a repertoire yet. We're building our own. It's like building, it's like making, people ask me, well, why wouldn't you want to run the New York City Ballet? First of all, I don't even know whether it would be an option, but mostly because I don't want to inherit someone else's legacy. I'd much rather make one of my own, whether it's as a choreographer or as a director. Even if it's in a small way, you know, I don't have to change the world, but um, but it's nice to be able to kind of provide that kind of artistic food for dancers. It's, it's uncomfortable. Running a company, a small company is really uncomfortable. Not having the structure around, not having 
um, that sort of big, especially in this country where everything's privately funded. This, it's a lot of work, and we've been very lucky because, you know, we've we've the way that the company's been set up, the model has been set up so that we rely more on um, on comp on theatres presenting us than we do on actually presenting ourselves anywhere. We don't self present, and that seems to work quite well. But it's still it's really stressful and. Um, but it is also about creating an artistic community. Like I feel like Morphosis, as it develops, becomes as much about the community of dancers within it as it does the artistic product that comes out of it. Um, and I think that's interesting because most people in the general public don't understand that for us, as dancers and as choreographers, the process is much more interesting really than the performance. And it's much, not that it's more interesting, it's just that it's so much more involved. I mean, we spend weeks and weeks developing and perfecting and and uh, getting frustrated and angry and upset and then feeling great the next day because we've achieved something and then it all breaks down again and then it builds up again. And all of that side of things, um, that, that process, then informs the product. So if the dancers have had a great experience with that building, you know, and even when it does get frustrating, have sort of somewhat support around from the other dancers and also from the artistic people, the staff and the choreographers and the ballet masters, that, that then it makes the final performance so much better, rather than just going out there kind of angry and bitter and sort of. If you're exhausted, if you, yeah, if you're exhausted, but you're happy exhausted, um, and it is an exhausting thing, and it, it's really, and I, I see that all the time. I see my dancers just um, on, you know, on the verge of complete exhaustion. But still, it's like it's fulfilling kind of exhaustion. It's not beaten down, um, and you can see, you can tell as a member of the public, even if you're not a dance aficionado, you can tell when you're watching beaten down dancers like paste on the smile, like put the makeup, cover up all the frustrations with the makeup and the sequins and the glitter and get out there and it's, that's not, that's not moving in any way. But if they come out and you, you, you can just sense it, you can feel it, it comes across the footlights. People always talk about, you know, projecting across the orchestra pit, projecting across the footlights. That comes from the whole experience, not just from like half an hour before the performance going and doing the warm-up and putting on the makeup.